Hey everyone, it's me, Empress Arcana, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Hi guys, welcome to the extra special existential crisis edition. No, I'm always having an existential crisis, what are you talking about? How are you guys doing? I hope well, I hope well. I've had a lot on my mind, I was going to leave it, let sleeping dogs lie, but I couldn't help myself because I have too many thoughts. It's quite annoying, and I've been thinking so much, taking notes down earlier. I was listening to Savage Garden, just vibing, and looking at my my natal chart, looking at the transits, all that, all that jazz. And I was like, okay, I understand that I have this, um, because uh, let me tell you, fam, um, as I promised to update you guys on my, uh, spiritual journey development or whatever the hell, <laughs> I don't know what it is anymore. It's been, mm, it's been a lot, but, um, yeah, so I was like, wow, I feel a bit debilitated. No, not a bit. That's quite the lie. Um, hmm. A lot has been going on around me and with people around me and I'm just doing my best to, you know, keep going as we all do. But either way, looking through my transits, if you will, I was like, okay, I understand that my the transiting north node, as I mentioned, um, it's conjunct my natal north node and me trying to understand we are always students of life and I um I am constantly trying to to learn and grow as a person be a better person yada yada and the way that I do this is by understanding myself on I guess that spiritual level to be able to implement it into my physical but um I know some of you might be like, oh gosh, you just, you're thinking too much. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But listen, <laughs> there's, there's, um, there's a reason for my madness. <laughs> um, I look at it and I was noticing. So I was looking at my needle chart, right? So a lot of this might sound like gibberish to you guys, but I'll try my best to explain it. Um, so I am a Libra rising. That is my first house in my natal chart, meaning my second house would be, you guys are getting all the stuff, all the, all the secrets, all the deets on my natal chart, but that's okay. Um, my second house is Scorpio. I have my moon conjunct my Pluto. Help. Um, <laughs> and then I have in my third house, um, okay, that one doesn't count. I would listen. I'm looking at the chart. And I'm like, I forgot that I, I added some some asteroids. And I was like, listen, I was just doing a little bit of research on nasty asteroids. And I've spoken about this before. Hey, yo, it, it's okay. No shame here. I was just looking at, you know, some interesting colorful asteroids to uh, decorate my NATO chart. <laughs> Because I have, apparently, I have my lust asteroid in Sagittarius as well. But what, I do not know why I'm sharing this. But I have here my Juno, my Saturn, my Uranus. And, well, because it's there. Because I forgot to take the code off while, like, on it, uh, on the website. So, lust is there too. And it's like, yo, what's up? They're all retrograde. And I'm like, oh, thanks. That's great. That's fantastic. I remember reading up on, I mean, it's fascinating. I love looking into this stuff so I can get, it's, um, it's as I've said, bleh, excuse me, it's as I've said before, I love seeing um, certain things that just ring true to me. Doesn't mean that it's like, okay, well, that's set in stone and whatnot. It's just interesting. I find it um, added, um, it's a, you know, it's like sprinkling into what I already know about myself. 
Um, so my Juno asteroid and Saturn are conjunct in Sagittarius. All these planets, um, Juno, Saturn, and Uranus are all retrograde. So is lust. Like, I don't even... I have my intuitive opinion on that, but I will not discuss it here. <laughs> um, but Juno and Saturn retrograde conjunct. I read up that and I took notes on this as well because I found it very interesting for myself that I am um, people with Juno and Saturn um, conjunct and not even talking about retrograde. That's just an added bonus for me because I have so many things retrograde in my chart. And I know I've already mentioned that, but in um, just to bring bring that back up into the conversation, uh, retrogrades are just energies that take longer to like the lessons of each of the planets or asteroids or whatever is being implemented into your natal chart uh, from these energies, if you will. Um, they're just these lessons take longer to process um, in your lifetime and um but as I've said before, once you learn the lesson with a retrograde, it sticks. <laughs> so there's that. There's a positive. It's not, I used to be very sad that I have like, I literally have five planets retrograde on my chart. And I'm like, God, that sucks. <laughs> um, but I've learned to accept that, yeah, it's taken, I'm a, you know, it's taken longer for me to develop certain things in life. But that just means that this is going to stick with me because I learned, like, there are things in my life at this point, like, I'm 37 years old. This is the moment that I'm learning about certain aspects of myself that I didn't even think I was ever going to develop in this lifetime. Um, and it's refreshing. It's scary. It's a lot of things. And I'm here like, wow. So... I can experience this, it'll stick. The lesson sticks. So again, with Juno and Saturn, um, I read somewhere that it's because Juno is about commitment and what you seek in a partner. Um, it's just, and with Saturn being that structure, that, um, what's the word? I, um, it is the hard lessons and being able to create this structure in the, the hard lessons, the, the structure in your life in terms of what house it's in and whatnot. All this is in my third house of communication, whoop de doo <laughs> And that, that's just funny to me because then I have basically my natal chart is all flipped uh, where, for example, I do not know why I'm going off about this. It is not the time to do this, but whatever. Um, where Libra would be the seventh house of partnerships, relationships, and so forth. I have that in my first house where that would be Aries. So I have that flipped. So I have all these energies and on the flip side. So they're in opposition. Yay me. Um, I've, I've taken this as more lessons. So literally I look at my chart and I've learned to love my chart. Um, oh, I hear the tippy tappers. Has my, my girl decided to join me? Nope. She left. <laughs> she said, no, you talk too much. Oh, oh, the excitement. I hear the tippy tappies. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> so <laughs> she's so cute. Uh, because it's an opposition, there is this tension. It's, it is a, an opposition is considered a hard, it's considered a, ha, I can't speak, hard aspect. <laughs> I had a moment there. I couldn't say it. Uh, it's, a, it's considered a hard aspect in astrology. Um, to, so the lessons of Libra are now being implemented into the first house of self. So it's a lot of lessons. I look at my chart. I'm like, great, more lessons for me to learn. Oh, great. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. No, I'm not ready. Never ready. So. Hmm. 
I just imagined myself. I'm like, okay, I'm going on a, like <laughs> a spiritual quest. I'm going to become a monk or, or a nun. I thought about becoming a nun at one point when I was younger. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> might as well. Right. Um, anyway, but with, um, <laughs> my, my interest in the occult, that would be, that would be something. Um, <laughs> so all right, back to the point. Yeah, my third house of communication. But yes, uh, lessons, yeah, yeah, yeah. Juno and Saturn. The hard lessons of commitment, of marriage, of what you want. Because I have this conjunct, it is not a negative aspect, but because they're retrograde, it has taken me longer to um, to learn about these concepts or, 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 or more of it's not easy for me to just um where let's say people do casual dating and stuff like that that has never been me I'm not that person I can't um it's something where I need to be sure and because this uh third house uh Sagittarius energy it's fiery it's great and it's but it's in communication so it's very important for me to have a sense of um, stability with communication and knowing as long as I know what I want and being able to communicate that with um, partnerships and commitment and whatnot. So there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot to uncover in a chart. And it's pretty cool if you guys are into that. Um, but I was just looking at my chart and I'm like, uh, what's going on now? Oh, snapple wapple pop. Let me turn that off. Sorry. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, I was looking at the transits and what of the transits stood out to me <laughs> other than Pluto wrecking everyone? <laughs> like get wrecked. <laughs> Pluto is just like retrograde and it's like, you know, it's all good. It's all good in this neighborhood. Uh, I'm like, no, it's not. You're in my fourth house and it hurts. Get the fuck out. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all right, enough of my chart. <laughs> I thought it was just interesting. I also have, uh, let me see. Yeah, Chiron, the wounded healer asteroid, also retrograde currently, and it's still in Aries. Um. I should do transit updates. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty neato. Um, hmm. I've been wanting to, but the inspiration for that is like, meh. <laughs> the inspiration for a lot of things are meh right now because I'm just like, who am I? Where am I? Why am I? <laughs> no. Um, hmm. I did sense, I, I do stand by, I do feel that there's been a shift and there's a lot of people that I've talked, uh, I've spoken to that are going through something very similar where it's like reevaluating everything they know. That's where I'm at. I'm like, whoa, um, I know who I am. <laughs> I would hope so, right? <laughs> Let's hope I know my name. Sure. <laughs> um, hmm. But there is this, uh, like, I'm, I'm redefining a lot of things. And it's, it's scary, but I just, I hope that I, I mean, oh, this is a little bit vulnerable. <laughs> I don't have to talk about it. Oh, um, because of things that have been hap happening in my life, uh, on, on a personal level, I've been feeling very alone and like not having certain support, but I do have people in my life that, that, that support that they're beautiful people in my life that, that care and are willing to support me no matter what. And all that, that's not, um, I, I make my own family, right? I've, I still stand by this because, um, family is a very touchy subject for me and, um, Yeah. So I've been like, I hope that 
in this transformation, this transformative time for myself, I hope that I'm not alone doing it. Or I'm too scared to show these parts of myself where I'm a complete mess right now. I feel anyway, like I am like, Nanako, can you, <laughs> can you stop moving around? You always come out of my recordings. You always, she's like, what do you expect? I am, <laughs> she's like, I'm the center of attention, mother. Oh, boo boo. Anywho, my girl, I love her so much. Oh, I look into her eyes and I'm like, my baby. <laughs> um, oh, baby. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, so it's been a lot of that. So that's why I've been, whoa, whoa, honey. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> you okay? Oh, shit. Hey, it's okay. It's all right. Hmm? Damn, my girl. You know you have water there, right? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you okay? My old lady. <laughs> She's given me so many scares this year. <laughs> oh, my baby. All right, all right. So, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if um anyone else is feeling that existentialness, like to this extreme because I really do feel it's crazy um I take off my glasses I put them on just to look at the screen with the transits <sighs> I've been thinking a lot but um but yeah I I have um I got into a discussion with um a family member and it was a little bit heated and where I've spent my whole life never taking much risks of, of you know, and I, I realized that what do I have to lose, right? And I, eh, sometimes it's just it's, this is the, the, the dilemma of do I share with someone something or just keep it to myself? I usually keep it to myself. Um, but sometimes you just wish you can talk to someone, right? And, well, this didn't go as well as I thought it would. And it was a little, it was a bit negative and it was a bit of a downer. But I'm still standing strong on my resolve, baby. It's, I realize that knowing these secrets of my mom and dad now before they passed and I'm just like, I love my, I love my parents, rest their souls, but I know they were selfish. They kept me for themselves hidden from the world and I am now the one suffering for a lot of the things that doesn't mean I don't love them. I don't know why I'm sharing this shit. <laughs> um and it's when you give yourself to a loved one completely family or friend or whatever but uh it's something more out of obligation so i would say family cuz family tends to have that oblig obligation bit to it I've always had that, and I have no regrets for the obligations I fulfilled with family. Oh, my girl. My girl. Oh, my God. My girl. Jesus Christ. I am so sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, and it's... Hmm. What I've been asking myself in many aspects, because it seems to be the question, when is it going to be my turn to put myself first? And that's what I've been, mm, ooh, I did not, oh, I'm not going to get sad. I'm not going to cry. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not going to cry. Mm -mm, no. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> so this is why I'm having the, the biggest existential crisis of my life. <laughs> Uh, 
because I I want to leave Florida. I don't I want to get away from here. But all in due time. I got to play my cards right. But um yeah, fam. I don't know why I'm sharing this. <laughs> Well, I did promise an update, and I guess I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about these things. Um, that's why I've been going through quite the metamorphosis in terms of my what I want to post. Do I even, what do I want to do with my channel, if anything at all? Right now I'm just posting whatever, whatever I feel like. I haven't done the celebrity readings, and that's a little bit of a... I won't give the whole reason for that, but, 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 um, I, I don't like when people come off entitled, that turns me off, and when there's entitlement behind a request or something, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna enable people, sorry, so I'm kind of like, mm, I like I like doing the celebrity readings, but people become very, um, oh, this is tea and I'm so sorry, but then you know what? Not many people listen to this stuff, so it's okay. <laughs> I don't like entitlement. I don't like when people are on their high horse. I'm like, oh, really? I'm going to knock you down a peg, baby. No way. I don't like that injustice. I don't like that. Oh, Nanako. And I know that sounds very like, who are you to... No, it's my content. I can do what I want. So it's been a lot of... I Listen, I've gone through... And I've spoken about this before. I've gone through nasty messages, death threats. I've gone through so much just because... People... Attach themselves to... A celebrity. I'm just doing it for fun, fam. I'm, if people are going to get like that, I don't want to do readings like that. That doesn't mean I'm not going to, but I don't like that vibe, yo. Mm -mm. Um, so I've held back on that because of the obsessive energy that a lot of people have come at me with. And I do feel, uh, I apologize for anyone listening that does like the celebrity readings. Um, this is just something I've been battling with for um, almost um, since I've, um, I think after the first year I started doing them. Um, no. Mm -mm. I got too much going on, on my, in my head for, for drama that I didn't sign up for. Uh, all I want to do is heal people. All I want to do is tell a story, you know. All I want to do is possibly help you out, see and understand yourself better. That's great. I like that. I like that. The inner teacher in me is all like, yeah, baby, let's go. I love that. I did want to become a teacher at one point. Uh, I, I remember I dropped out of college the second time around because the first time was when my mom got sick and then... I went back because uh, she was doing a little bit better. And then my aunt passed away and then my mom got worse. And I was like, ah. So it was like this on and off. Um, and yeah, my aunt would have been, today would have been, would be her birthday. August 14th. Very special lady. Very special lady. Very sassy. Te quiero mucho, mi tía. Mi tía linda, te extraño. Te extraño mucho. And my mom too. So, um, <laughs> my dog snoring. She just got to be the center of attention. I could have sworn she was a Leo. <laughs> but now, <laughs> she's not. <laughs> um, hmm. But... What else? Is there anything else to talk about? Because I don't want to end it on that kind of note. Mm. 
and then a go. Oh, oh gosh. Well, first, then I killed another one of those big ass spiders. Bruh, no. Oh my God. And that one, I had my bestie on the phone with me and I felt horrible about that. Holy crap. I was like, I was, <laughs> I was killing it, but I was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing. I and I'm short as all hell and I can't reach the tippy toppies. And I'm just like, that thing is huge. The middle was bigger. And I was like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> I haven't graduated from Cottage Core University. I don't got my machete. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Um hmm. <sighs> Uh, but God, that was, that thing was, mm -mm 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 -mm. now I'm just like paranoid looking at the walls. Like every five seconds, I'm like, Oh God. <laughs> um, hmm. Nanako. Well, something that was really nice. Um, I received a very, very beautiful message from a client and that warmed my heart. It's been, and that's another thing that I've been you know, kind of struggling with too, fam. I love what I do. I love doing readings. I love, you know, doing comfort letters, comfort readings, what, a, you know, what have you. But, um, again, when people start, you have no control of what people, you know, a client is a client and I respect that. And, but, you know, if they don't respect my boundaries, I'm not going to take that client. So sorry. I've gone to a point in my life where, if you don't respect me, why do I have to, well, I don't want to say it like that, but I won't be taking clients. I've, gosh, I won't be taking clients if they're not respectful and they're not respecting my boundaries. And let me tell you guys, I'm very open-minded. It takes a lot for me to be like, mm. <laughs> it takes a lot. I have a lot of patience. I'm very good with, um, um, dare I say, I'm, um, what's the word? I feel I can handle certain situations very well, um, with respect, with, uh, with care. But when I feel that, that boundary being crossed and that they, you know, they start acting a certain way, I'm like, no. And I say this again, and I'm expressing this because it's important to have boundaries in every way, shape, and form, whatever, in life. And I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> so it's always very nice when um, a client uh, leaves a beautiful review or they leave me a beautiful message in response to what I've done for them. And being told that my comfort, like my comfort character readings or comfort readings or whatever, my readings are very healing for them. And that, excuse me, um, it helps them through very dark times in their life and whatnot. And it's just like, it is a very beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm very glad that I can do that because that just means I'm doing something and I am fulfilling something. It's what I want to do. It's the reason why I do this stuff. Um, I've been, you know, more restrictive of who I take in as clients. Yes, absolutely. Because I got to protect myself too. Um, but it is always a pleasure and an honor when I can read for someone and they trust me. And I can help them see things that they might have overlooked or... Uh, bring to light something you know what I mean it, it's that's a very a very beautiful feeling and for them to feel seen or heard and loved and comforted um very important and I'm very glad I can do that it means so much to me because I know personally excuse me I know personally how it can be when you need to reach out to someone but you don't know how and, or you, you're just not heard or people are just not patient. 
there's, um, it takes a lot for someone to open up and trust anyone. Um, so I still say it's an honor and a pleasure when I can do these readings for people and I can help them in any way. It is the only reason why I haven't closed my doors because I've been thinking about a lot of things and wondering, should I even continue doing readings? Yeah, I've thought about that too. I'm telling you, existential crisis, man. <laughs> but then I'm like, but damn, that's what I've, that's what I do. That's what I, I, I mean, it's not the only thing I do, but it's, it's what I've always wanted to do. But I've also always wanted to write and just publish my novels. But I, hmm. Oh, well. either way, again, a blessing to be able to help someone. And it feels good to know that it did do something. It reminded me that I'm not completely, like, out of it, you know? Because I've been feeling kind of like, damn, have I lost my, have I lost, excuse me, <laughs> have I lost my touch, you know? It's like, hmm. thought about a lot of stuff but life goes on so yeah there's that it was a beautiful beautiful message so very very sweet um uh, hmm. anything else hmm. anything else I know that oh okay yeah um I don't know if I'm gonna sing or not um it's late and Mm-hmm. Mm. Sorry. There was a song I was listening to that that's actually what got me like, okay, I want to record something. Mm. Whew, sorry, my head hurts. Um, mm. It was... What I was talking about... Um, or what I've been feeling. Mm. This desire to take a leap of faith. Um, there's this line from a Luis Fonsi song. It's called, uh, the, the, the song is called Dime que no te irás. Tell me that you won't leave. Um, and hmm, this part It is a love song, but hmm, let's see if I can do it. Um, Abrázame demasiado, que me perderé sin ti. Ayúdame a seguir. Hmm. Quédate conmigo. Hmm. Que me perderé sin ti. No sé lo que haré sin ti. En tus brazos nadaré. A salvo del miedo. A salvo de todo. Y jamás te soltaré. Mientras me quede un suspiro. So, <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. I... Singing for me, even if it's just for fun, it's something so pure and innocent. It reminds me of my childhood. The one thing, along with writing, that no one was able to take away from me. I didn't let anyone take that away from me. Um, and yes, there are, are moments in one's life where our voices, it feels like it's taken from us, but... It's because we close ourselves off because of what, you know, whatever reason, whether it be traumatic experiences or anything that that shuts us off. And it takes time to open up again. A salvo del miedo, a salvo de todo. Despite the fear, despite everything. 
I won't let you go, it says, as long as I have my last breath, my, like, as long as I can breathe, I won't let you go. I won't let this go. That is the vibe. That is what I'm feeling. That is the desire I have within. I don't want to let this that I'm feeling go. I'm not giving up on what I want. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep striving for that better tomorrow, baby. I'm not going to stop. And that is where I'm fighting myself. And I keep hearing, do it scared. I'm terrified. (laughs) But I won't give up. And I hope that if this message can help anyone, don't give up either. Whatever it is that you want to do for yourself, you're more than deserving of this thing that you want, this person that you want, whatever it is that you want. Do this for you. Explore the, explore and, and take steps toward what it is that your heart desires. And don't let it go. All right, that is it. <laughs> I feel so silly, guys. But that is it. That is it, my dears. All right. Thanks for listening. Thank you for spending some quality time with me. It's always a pleasure. It's always nice. Hope you're well. And take care. Love you. Bye-bye.